people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say, that's the bad guy. Welcome to the mother relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Okay, we'll start with this. Some post-fight comments from Dimitri Bivol that have been getting a lot of attention. Dimitri Bivol has said. Canelo Alvarez possesses harder one-punch power than Artur Betterbeev. Betterbeev is not about a heavy punch. He's about how strong he is. Not only one punch, combinations. All his punches in the combinations are heavy. Canelo puts all his energy on single punches. So maybe with single punches, Canelo is harder than Betterbeev. But if you ask them to do five punches with Betterbeev, Every punch will be hard. What does that mean? That Canelo Alvarez loads up on his shots. Oh. I mean, you have to factor in the fights, how they play out. How Canelo fights, how Artur fights, who throws more punches in a round, more punches in a fight. Canelo loads up on his shots. It's not a secret that Canelo is a hard puncher and that he has power, but he's not the most prolific puncher because he does a lot of punch picking. Oh. So what you're talking about are well-placed single shots that have a lot on them because he loads them up, whereas Artur shoots from the hip. He doesn't load up his punches and throws three and four punches, four and five punches at a time. All of which, according to Dimitri Bivol, are hard punches. Very strong punches, right hand, uh, even through my left. I have, you see my thumb mm -hmm. is uh, swollen because I was holding it on my head and he was uh, beating on my hand. And that's and why you got the bruise there Yeah, as well. this is why I felt like my arm, my, my hand came inside of my head, you know, from, from the power. That's saying that Artur Betterbeev was able to hurt Dmitry Bivol even when he didn't get in, even when he didn't land clean. The punches that landed on the arms and gloves still did damage. That had a noticeable effect on the aesthetic of the fight. You see so many people talking about how many punches Artur was throwing versus how many actually got in. Sergio Mora talked about quote-unquote ineffective aggression. The punches Artur was throwing versus the punches Dimitri was blocking. But Dimitri's telling you that even the punches he was blocking hurt him. Makes sense. The fight I saw, even though Artur wasn't always getting in, he was always doing damage. Whenever he let his hands go, whether it's a punch that got in or a punch that didn't, it had a noticeable effect on Dimitri Bivol, Dimitri's demeanor, and where he wanted to be in that moment. He spent long spells moving around. Why do you think? Even the punches you block in hurt. An excellent fight. Dimitri Bivol was able to break Artur Betterbeev's knockout streak. He had stopped every man they had put in front of him until they put Dimitri in front of him. Although, had Dimitri stood in front of him more often, I think Dimitri would have got stopped too. It's Dimitri's movement, his defense, that allowed him to hear the final bell. I touched on that ahead of the fight. Dimitri's got the best defense of anyone in the entire light heavyweight division and some of the best defense in the sport. He can make himself a hard target and a hard man to hit, a hard man to hit clean. So that's gonna take something off of Artur Betterbeef's power that it'll be difficult to land flush. And I think we saw that play out on Saturday, but even the punches that didn't get in had a visible effect on Dimitri. Now, as it pertains to Canelo's power versus Artur's power, Canelo's a strong puncher, but it's in spots. It's not consistent because he's not a pressure fighter. That's what separates Canelo. That's why I tell you guys all the time, even though he knows how to apply pressure, he's not a pressure fighter. There is a subtle difference, and that's the activity. How many punches is he throwing per round? How often in a round, how often in a fight? Volume. What's being misconstrued is Canelo's methodology as a super middleweight 
as opposed to how he used to fight as, say, a junior middle or a middle. The guys at super middle are a lot taller, a lot longer, so more often than not, Canelo's the shorter, stumpier fighter that has to close the distance. This is being confused with pressure fighting because he has to get close to the guy and he's good enough to do it. Doesn't struggle anywhere near as much to close the distance against the moving target as, say, a Teofimo Lopez. Right? So there are times where Canelo looks like a pressure guy in there because he's closing the distance on a moving target and forcing them to retreat. However, he doesn't have a pressure fighter's work rate. And he doesn't have the engine for it. This is coming from a Canelo Alvarez fan. I'm a fan of Canelo. But even I know he ain't got the engine to be throwing punches and bunches all round, all fight. Pressure fighters often do. Artur does. Canelo loads up on his punches to generate that power. Artur doesn't have to. That's why Artur is the harder puncher of the two throughout. That's why guys like Edgar Berlanga, Jaime Munguia, and John Ryder would not be able to go the distance with an Artur better beef. They did with Canelo. Why? Canelo can generate good power, good, in a single punch, but he's not throwing anywhere near as many punches as Artur would, and anything, everything Artur throws is heavy. He shoots from the hip, he doesn't load up his punches. You know that loading up your punches can be taxing on your energy reserves, which explains why Canelo Alvarez so often takes one or two of the mid-rounds off to pace himself. Artur doesn't really have to. Because Artur doesn't try to add that little extra, that extra, to every single punch he throws. He shoots from the hip. The takeaway from all of this for me is that Artur Better Beef is in fact the stronger puncher of the two, even if Canelo Alvarez can generate really good power in a single punch, that's sporadic, that's intermittent, that's not all the time. Like, what would you think? Just, uh, yeah, hard punch, nothing, uh, nothing else. You know, he's not about, um, he has heavy punch and uh, it's very dangerous, no. He's about how strong he is and he's uh, not only one punch when he's trying to punching combinations, combinations. Yeah. all punches in the combinations are heavy yeah. you know it's not uh, i could compare like with the canelo yeah mm -hmm. he put all his energy all his power on a single punch yeah, and yeah maybe maybe single punch sometimes he's harder Canelo, yeah, than than better beef, no way. because better beef didn't yeah, didn't like do like up. yeah, better beef was more like close yeah, and compact. Yeah, 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 compact, Tight guard. Yeah. yeah. But if you ask them, let's do um, let's do like five punches, yeah, yeah? better beef, every punch will be yeah. hard. With Canelo, maybe first hard, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, not, not so yeah, hard. yeah. Um, both of them are strong, but uh, Bitter Beef is bigger and he's he born yeah. strong. He's just physically a bigger guy, but wow, you, so you felt Canelo actually was a little, just one punch, a little more, like you felt it more. Yeah, because Canelo, to land his punch, he was doing like yeah. from from the distance, he was trying to put all his energy yeah, on. Yeah. Bitter Beef is not doing this yeah, yeah. in the ring, uh, but if we ask him, to do it, maybe maybe his punch is harder, but he's not using it. Yeah, it's crazy because Canelo's a little guy, you know, little little 168. It just shows you like Canelo, you know, it's a strong guy too. But yeah. obviously, there's weight classes, there's different, you know. Yeah, and I told you about the strategy of yeah. them. Yeah, uh, Better Beef is not trying to to land hardest punch with yeah. full of his power but Canelo is trying yeah. and this is the great interview conducted by Marcos Villegas attention now turns to a second fight a rematch as both Artur Better Beef and Dimitri Bivol both welcome a rematch seems the most sensible sensical fight for the both of them though what can Dimitri do differently this was the question I asked immediately after the fight in my post-fight recap. I've had a little bit more time to think about it. So a lot of the times in a fight when Dimitri Bivol was blocking punches and backpedaling, circling away from Artur Better Beef, it still gave off an impression that now Artur's taking over the round. Even though the punches aren't getting in and they're not landing flush, because he's throwing so many of them and because Dimitri's retreating, looks like Artur's the ring general. So what can Dimitri Bivol do differently in a second fight? 
and it didn't dawn on me right then and there to tie him up. I remembered as I was watching the fight in the later rounds and Dimitri Bivol was just retreating and blocking punches, doing more of the same, I was screaming at my television, tie him up, smother him, smother his work. Bit of a dicey tactic, offsetting the other guy's aggression by tying him up. It's dicey because you don't want to do that too much. You may be deducted a point for excessive holding, right? Though if the question is, what can Dimitri Bivol do differently in a second fight to win it? He can incorporate some clinches. He can tie him up in spots. Not all the time. Something that a lot of other boxers, cerebral boxers, have resorted to in the past. We know that Floyd Mayweather, one of the more famous pure boxers, he didn't hesitate to tie a guy up if he was getting too antsy. Too froggy. Stifle his momentum by smothering his work, force him to reset, force him to start over. Frustrate him. Rematches are often won by the fighter who can change, the fighter who can take what they learned from the first fight and adjust. I feel like that's Dimitri more than Artur. I might have to go with Dimitri again. Because this is consistent with rematch situations, irrespective of what happened in the first fight, whether the boxer won or the boxer lost or it was a draw. What I tend to notice in rematch situations is whoever can change, whoever can adjust, that's the guy that wins. I think that's Dimitri more than Artur. Artur's a pressure guy. Pressure guys don't change much from one fight to the next. They're gonna do the same thing. Apply pressure. That's usually how that goes. A pressure fighter usually stays a pressure fighter through and through. And the most adjustments they might make in a rematch situation is try to apply even more pressure, but that's just more of the same. Some are saying that Otto is gonna knock him out the next time. And that's how they feel, but from what I've seen, whoever can change, whoever can adapt, that's the guy that wins. And I think that's Dimitri. Preparation. Now that he's been in there with Artur better be for 12 rounds, all of 36 minutes, he's felt the power, he's dealt with it, what worked, what didn't, what hurt. I feel like in the next camp, there will be an emphasis on Dimitri's physicality. They may try to come back stronger to land more authoritative punches because Dimitri landed a lot of punches, but they didn't have an effect on Artur, not really. Can't say Artur was ever hurt. He was stunned. I saw Dimitri stop him in his tracks once or twice, but not necessarily because Artur was hurt. Just got caught with a good shot. I think an emphasis on physicality in the next camp to land more authoritative punches and be stronger in the clinch. We might see that. How soon can we expect a rematch to happen? Because that's what a lot of people want to happen. The fight fans, Turkey LL Sheik, Eddie Hearn, Dimitri Bivol. It's the most sensible, sensical fight for the both of them, even Artur. Yeah, sure. You could go up to Cruiserweight and fight the big boys up there, but why fight those big boys when you can make Buku Dallas stay in put, staying where you are? To fight a guy you already beat anyway. It makes sense to have the rematch in the classic context of rematches, that it was so close, it could have gone either way. Let's see it again. I love it. Due to Turkey LL Sheik's passion, his commitment to continually deliver high quality fights, high quality matches that are otherwise difficult to make, I am confident that we will see a second fight, I am. Though in the event that we don't, understand this. Without Artur better be there at light heavyweight to keep Dimitri in line, Dimitri would have the run of the place. Not a single one of those guys that are there, whether it's Callum Smith or Anthony Yard, Joshua Buatzi, two new entrants in David Benavidez and David Morrell. None of those guys beat Dimitri. And none of those guys would have been able to go the distance, the full 36 minutes with Artur Betterbeef. None of them. That's what high-level boxing looks like, folks. I feel like this is lost on the American boxing fan, more so than anybody else's boxing fan from anywhere else. What the American boxing fan is used to seeing is one guy pouncing on the other. Matchmaking. One of David Benavidez pounces on a David Lemieux and all the guys that David Morrell pounced on at super middleweight he wasn't really able to do that at light heavy it's what they're used to the American boxing fan is used to is seeing one guy pounce on the other because the others overmatched this past Saturday's fight was a high quality fight involving not just one but two high quality fighters which is why the reactions are split between people who think Dimitri did enough and Artur did enough and the quality of the fight, enjoying it, it shouldn't be lost. It was a great fight. Irrespective of who you thought won, it was a great fight. It was a great fight overall, fought at the highest levels of today's light heavyweight division. It's Artur, Dimitri, then everybody else. And everybody else... They ain't even close. So understand that if by any chance a second fight 
a rematch doesn't happen between these two, Dimitri's likely going to stay at light heavyweight, and as soon as a title becomes available for him to fight for, he's gonna fight for it, that it's entirely possible Dimitri becomes a champion again. Even in the absence of Artur Betterbeef, hell, it's even more likely to happen in the absence of Artur Betterbeef. None of those guys could have Dimitri under the pressure that Artur had him under this past Saturday. None of them. That's just an interesting take, an interesting proposition. If a rematch doesn't happen, what happens to the landscape at 175? And that's what I think, though, ultimately, I am confident a rematch will happen. I am. The money is there. The interest is there. Leading up to the fight, you figured that if Artur wins, he might move up in weight. He might go to cruiser given how much time he's already spent at light heavy. Though given the competitive nature of this fight and the fact that Artur is getting up there in age, why go up there with those big young guys, contend with them and all their size and all their youth when you can stay put and make buku dollars? You know that Turkey likes to get things done and he likes to get them done in a timely fashion. Refreshing. Boxing needs more of that, by the way. Things happening when they need to, when they should, as quickly as possible. And if he's interested in doing a rematch and both teams are on board, we can expect to see this in either the first or second quarter of next year. That's at least one big fight that you can expect to see early next year. Saudi's contribution to the sport of boxing, so many people don't understand or don't want to, that if not for Turkey's interest in delivering these fights, boxing itself wasn't going to because neither Dimitri or Artur possessed the marquee value that would have made this fight possible in the American boxing scene or the Canadian one or anywhere else. These two guys were circling each other for years in the light heavyweight division and on more than one occasion i remember bob arum top rank empresario bob arum saying that the fight's got no pizzazz bivol is boring he didn't feel like making it so if not for turkey making these big cash injections we wouldn't have got this keep that in mind the next time you see somebody belly aching that they're not singing sweet caroline while they're drunk out of their minds in the audience you're not getting it it was either this or nothing. Nada. And then you'd be complaining about how these two guys aren't fighting each other. Why aren't they fighting each other? Because the money wasn't there before. It's there now, but now you want to complain about who's putting it up. There are a lot of malcontents, a lot of people that are all too used to complaining or finding something to complain about in the sport of boxing. I stay away from these people. I try not to mince words with them. As the lens they view boxing in, they're always looking for the negative. They're always looking for something to complain about. I bet they're great at parties. The proposition that in the not so distant future, they're gonna do it again. And Dimitri has to do better. He has to change. What he's gonna change, that's open to interpretation because he fought his ass off. He did fight his ass off. Even if you think Artur won, you have to give Dimitri that much. Very soon, he'll have to go to the well again.